longer than an O. Okay, that's how we normally write it. But medical without in Spanish, it's seen, S I N. So, what do you think the medical abbreviation for without is in, 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 the, in uh, medical ease? S I N? No, just the S. S with a line over it. Mm -hmm. And so, this is why. And I started recording, by the way. I started recording in case you're wondering. This really, really sucks. I was so looking forward to this. Oh, well, anyway, moving on. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to get started. Do you, do you have any questions before we start on, on the human body? No. All right. So you guys know what, what I... Uh, what I feel like I usually don't use a PowerPoint, but for this, you need to see the pictorials. So I'm going to use that, but I'm waiting for this damn thing to finish loading. Oh, I should take my meds before long. Otherwise, I'm really going to be hitting like. I got my vape ready. I got my pills. I got my drinks. Just don't ask me what's in my in my coke. Cause it's recorded and my boss would hear it. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, I take hydroxychloroquine and I haven't gotten COVID yet, so there must be something to it. I'm just messing. I'm trying to be funny, wake you guys up, get you guys in the mood. Got to, like, relieve some of the tension. Are you guys good? You guys happy today? Yeah? <clears throat> You guys ready to learn something new and exciting? Yeah. Every day. Well, good. I am so glad. So human body can be uh, a little complex, but we got to do what we can to make make things good. All right, there you guys are. Kind of sorta. <clears throat> it's only 131 slides. It's actually not too bad. But I talk a lot. So, if you notice the schedule, I I, I use two days to teach this. And because it really is a lot, and, and I do get a little bit more into the anatomy and physiology of a couple of different systems. Now, excuse me, in my experience, what happens is this. The students that struggle with registering, any ones that don't, but, you know, they pass, but the ones that struggle with registry, the topics they struggle on is respiratory, cardiac and trauma. Today, we're going to get through respiratory. Tomorrow, we'll start on trauma. I really emphasize those two topics because, again, our students that don't do, that don't pass registry. 
uh, that's where they're where they struggled. So I want to make sure you guys really, really understand the body systems, but specifically respiratory and and cardiac or the cardiovascular system. Okay. So as far as what we're doing, we're going to go over anatomical terms, body systems, and then medical terminology. In medical terminology. There's a lot of tables in 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 your book. There's a lot of words in there, isn't there? Yeah, it gets a little, a little complex. So um, we're going to make life. And, and fortunately, my damn tablet quite go as planned, but oh well. The mark of a good EMS person is the ability. So that's what we're doing. And. All right, so let's look at this. So EMTs Brandon and Dylan have just arrived on the scene of a patient with multiple stab wounds. Law enforcement has secured the scene, allowing Brandon and Dylan to approach the patient. And he's a man in his 20s. Brandon notices immediately that the patient appears to be un unresponsive with pale skin. His shirt and the upper portion of his pants are saturated with blood, and blood has started to pool on the floor around the patient. That's a lot of blood. Dylan reports that the patient has a weak carotid pulse and begins managing the patient's airway and ventilation. Way to go, Dylan. Way to be assertive and aggressive. So cutting away the patient's clothing to determine where he has been stabbed, Brandon sees two stab wounds to the left side of the chest a stab wound to the right upper abdomen, a stab wound to the right groin, ouch, and several cuts on the forearms and hands. And this guy's got food bar. What happens when you say something about a, a dude's shoes? So don't expect a lot of answers right now, but what do you think the, some of the organs that may have been injured by the stab wounds? So you can see where the injuries are. Wait, wrong one. All right. Liver. So you guys want to be quiet? Uh huh. Okay, the liver. Lungs, heart. Okay, lungs and heart. The stop. The what? Oh, never mind. I read it wrong. No, you, you, got, you got the abdomen. That's good. But it's the intestines, small, uh, the small intestine. Liver. Okay, liver's already been mentioned. And the money maker. Just kidding. All right, so anyway, um, so what are the consequences of injury to each of those organs? Internal bleeding, bleeding. Okay. Loss of manhood, uh, loss of an internal organ, pneumothorax, hemothorax, 
tension in my thorax, pericardial tamponade, bleeding out, a steep worm type of thing. All right, as far as terms, we'll, we'll go over the terms. So here's the thing about the medical, uh, the medical field. We have our own language, just like the damn lawyers have their own language, so do we. And in order to, to, to be able to communicate with others, we have to learn that language. Now, I mentioned earlier how knowing the human body is important. We need to know what's going on. We assess that we look for problems. Just like we were saying right now, you know, what do you think the, the injuries are? Well, that's very important. You need to know structures. You need to know what organs are where. You need to think about the injuries to them and what happened as a result. If your heart's not working properly, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to malfunction, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for us, for human beings, malfunction is not a good thing. Uh, you know, and unfortunately, as we get older, the body does start to malfunction. So, um, so we need to know about the human body. Now, as far as when we talk about AMP, anatomy and physiology, anatomy deals with this of, of how the body is made, what the structures are, whereas physiology is how it works. For example, how do we breathe? Our diaphragm contracts, our intercostal muscles contract, creating a negative pressure. Uh, using Boyle's law, the, uh, the greater pressure on the outside goes inside to equalize. And then through, through diffusion, the oxygen goes into the capillaries where it goes into the bloodstream and it's circulated throughout the body. And diffusion again jumps off the oxygen, picks up carbon dioxide, gets back into the lungs, into the uh, capillaries. The carbon dioxide is diffused out. And again, with that negative pressure being created, as we exhale, now the negative pressure is on the outside, and that air goes out, again, using Boyle's Law. That's how what well, works, okay? I know that you're like, what the flock did you just say? And can you rewind? Well, the cool thing is, uh, I got to remember, I need to start putting the, uh, the videos on YouTube, your guys' videos. Um, I will send you a link. Uh, later today, or I'll, I'll try and do it on the break. Um, there's already videos on there from the previous classes. Uh, so you guys are welcome to listen to those and see them and see how how unmotivated they were and are. Or um, you could watch your, your guys' own videos. So um, that way you have access to them. We tried using other things to be able to make them available to you. It didn't work. So. I have my YouTube channel, um, and then I need, I need to rename it into something cool. I'll take some suggestions. Um, you guys can go on there and take a look at the videos, okay? And you'll see me vaping a lot. <laughs> All right, and then the, the, the language itself, medical terminology, concise communication, because when you tell somebody, you can't say that the guy has a stab wound to his leg, okay? well. Under medical terminology, the leg is not what you think. And what part? Is it near the femoral artery that are we going to go, oh, crap? Or, eh, it's a flesh wound. All right. So you guys ready to get involved with uh, terminology? Or not terminology, but uh, anatomical terms? Yeah. <laughs> You guys are kind of like, oh my gosh, what am I getting into? It's not too bad, trust me. Um, first off, the very first thing you have to remember is what we call the anatomical position. The anatomical position is where the person standing uh, tall, erect, what we call it, and the palms are facing out. So let me back up so you can see here. So the patient's standing tall, palms down. That's the anatomical position, okay? Everything else goes off of that. Always remember that. Now, <clears throat> as far as left or right, we're always going to be looking at the patient's left or right. 
It's not going to, we're not going to reference our left or right. It's the patient's left or right. So as I'm seeing you guys, my left is your guys' is right. And I already know, Dylan, I see your right shoulder. Even though you're to the left of me, or your shoulder's to the left of me, on my left, it's still your right shoulder. But I've been doing it long enough where I, I can flip it right away and know, okay, I, that's your right shoulder. So it's always referencing the, the patient's left or right, okay? Now, there's different positions that we have to understand, and this is where I wish my tablet was working. Um, the, the first one is a position where the patient is laying down. Down. Um, As far as supine goes, that's the most common position. All it is, is the patient laying down, but they're face up, they're laying on their back. They're supine. Okay. That's supine, laying on their back. The other one, I think I know why. Uh, and look at something real quick. Anyway, I think I know what happened. All right. Um, so the next position is prone. And the way I think about prone is where are you? you're laying on your stomach, your face down. And remember I told you about the law of association? So I use the law of association to remember uh, a lot of these terms. So, for example, prone, it's laying face down on their stomach. So I like to think about prone as being prone to attack from the rear. Because you're giving your back to the person, to your attacker, to your opponent, whatever the case is you're prone to attack from the rear. I think weird, okay? So prone is the patient laying flat on their stomach. Then you have the lateral recumbent position. People call this also the, the shock position. I'm sorry, the recovery position. The reason being is they're tilted on the side and so they have vomitus or they happen to vomit, or any other type of fluid, it could just drain out. It's keeping the tongue out of the way, keeping the airway open. Now, as far as you see up at top where it says the right lateral recumbent position, it's still the lateral recumbent position, but it just depends on which side the patient's on. So here, they're on their right side, right? So, they would be on the right lateral recumbent position. Now, most of the time, when we get them in the ambulance, if, if we have to put them in the recovery position or the lateral recumbent position, 
we're actually going to put him in the left lateral recumbent position. Why do you think that is? Uh, it, uh, it, need a few, it has a better way to get it out. Well, you could do the same thing with the right lateral recumbent. Does it have something to do with the heart? Nope. Sorry, sorry, I muted you. There was a lot of noise coming for me. A lot of background noise. Go ahead, try again. We can't hear you. Uh, there's still way too much static or outside noise coming in. I heard you can you hear me now, but that's about it. Any guesses? Uh, is it, uh -huh. is it uh, easier to pass on air on the other side, on the left side? No, it's the same, left or right. Did anybody hear that? No. no uh -uh. Your background noise is really overpowering your voice. Uh, ambulances. Is there a lot of room on the right, uh, on the other side of the patient when they're on the right lateral recumbent? Nope, there isn't. You sit on the bench seat, the patient needs to face you, so you put them on the left lateral recumbent. I mean, you could put them on the right. Some ambulances do have a little jump seat on, on the other side, but some of them don't. So left lateral recumbent. See, there's left lateral. It's the same thing. Now, the other position is called the Fowler's position, and we further we go further with, with that position. Fowler's position is just sitting up. And they have the high, we, we also have what we call the high Fowler's position, where they're like at a 90 degree angle or as high as it can go. So she's almost in the high Fowler's. And then we have a semi Fowler's, which is like a 45 degree angle, give or take. So that they're, Relaxing, they're, they're sitting back. I uh, didn't remember on the gurney how we we had the head uh, raised up, so that would be a semi Fowler's position. Now the other position we don't we don't really use it. Well, yes and no. There's a position called the Trendelenburg, Trendelenburg position. And what that position is, is where we elevate the feet 8 to 12 inches above the heart. And we also call it, instead of Trendelenburg, we call it the shock position. But... Uh -huh. <laughs> But, <clears throat> excuse me, but we kind of went away from the Trendelenburg position. So we will put them in the shock position, and that's just elevating the feet. And you notice it, and um, I know I showed one group. 
um, about raising the legs. And that's just to put them in the shock position. You just want to elevate the legs. It doesn't have to be eight to 12 inches above the heart. You just elevate the legs. Okay, so the shock position is where you elevate the legs. Cool? All right. So which statement on the left is best describes each term on the right? Click on the terms to check uh, your answers. So lying in a face down position is which one? Um, what was that? Prone. Um, prone. Lifting the arm. Oh, we didn't go on that. I don't know why they had this. We haven't even done it yet. Let me check something. Real quick. All right. So a couple other terms because again, they didn't do it on here. <clears throat> you have abduction and adduction. So think about the word abduction. What is that? What is abduction? Take somebody? What was that? You take somebody? Yeah, when you take somebody, you kidnap them, right? Abduction. Well, uh, ab abduction in medical terminology means to go away. So right now my arm <clears throat> is against my, my body, but if I abduct it, there we go. Move it away from the body. Now the opposite of abduction is adduction. ADD. So what do we do when we add? Bring it close to you. Yeah. Put them together. So adduction, bringing it back to the body. So you see us association? Abduction, you take away. Adduction, you bring back. You add in. Sure. So. Uh, 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 uh. All right, <clears throat> so when we say lifting the arm out to the side or away from the body, what is it? Abduction. Abduction, you take it away. All right, the other one, the other term that's on, uh, that wasn't on before is flexion and extension. So let's see. So Brian, do some flexion for us. Flexion? Yeah. This, we want to go to the gun show, so show us some flexion. <laughs> there you go. So flexion, just think about flexing. Or I like to think about it as making the angle smaller. So flexion. You're flexing, you're showing off the guns. And then the opposite of flexion, what, what are we going to do now from this point? Flex. Extension. Yeah. Flexion, extension. Okay, flexion, extension. Now, earlier, there was two things I told you. Number one. What is the anatomical position? How are the hands in the anatomical position? Palms out. Palms out. So that, the front part of the body 
is the anterior portion, okay? And then the back part of the body is the posterior portion. All right, so palms are up. Now, when someone's laying face up, what do we call that position? Supine. 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 And then when they're laying on their stomach, what do we call that? Prone. Prone. So <clears throat> there's two more terms, and it talks about turning over like with a hand. So right now, palm up, right? That's the anatomical position. So if I pronate, means to turn the hand over. Because remember, this is my backside. So I turned it with my back up. So that's pronation. And if I flip it over palm up, that's called supination. All right, pronation, supination. Okay. Um, pronation, supination. All right. All right, um, as far as planes, anatomical planes are imaginary divisions to help with reference points. And so we have, as we see over here, we have the frontal plane that basically, or also known as the coronal plane, goes straight down the body and it splits the body into front and back or as I mentioned earlier, into anterior and posterior. Okay, anterior and posterior, the frontal plane. And then we have the sagittal plane, also known as the medial plane or the midline, that goes right down the center of the body, and that divides the body into left and right. Okay, so the midline, the uh, the median plane, the sagittal plane, all the same thing. Divides the body into left and right. Uh, the transverse or horizontal, horizontal plane, that goes across in the center to divide into superior and inferior, top and bottom. So superior, think about above, high, and inferior, below, less. Uh, and then we have the mid-axillary line. There's an imaginary line, as we, we've been mentioning, that goes down the center of the armpit. That's a mid-axillary line. And again, it's front and back, but it's a reference point. Just like we also have the mid-clavicular line in the middle of the clavicle, the, the collarbone is called the clavicle. So down the bottom, and that mid-clavicular -cla line goes down over the nipple. So that's where you know where your mid-clavicular line is uh, on either side. Mid-axillary, again, uh, in the middle of the armpit, goes straight down. All right, so far so good? So now, as far as directional terms, I talked about superior and inferior. Going up towards the head is superior. Going down towards the feet is inferior. Now, the midline goes right down where? Right in the middle, splits the two halves. Left and right. Okay, there you go. So anything going, anything going,
Um, anything going towards the midline, we call that medial. So for example, so here's my midline, right? So from here going in, we call that medial. And as it goes away from the midline, we call that lateral. So let me give you an example. This inner part of my elbow or my forearm, because it's towards the middle, we call this the medial aspect of my forearm or my medial forearm. So if you say the patient has a, a three inch laceration to the medial for, uh, left medial forearm, then I'll know it's right in here. Okay. Or somewhere in here actually, but it's in here. If, if you say, the patient has a three inch laceration to the left lateral forearm, then this is my lateral aspect. Because remember, it's away from the midline. Okay, so medial middle, towards the middle, towards the midline. And then lateral to the side, think about football when the quarterback throws a lateral. Where does it go? Out. Yeah, to the side. Yeah, out to the side. So I saw you mouth to the side there, Jessica. All right. Um, now, the other term, and they usually say towards the midline as well, but I, I like to reference it as to the point of attachment. And that is proximal and distal. So for example, here's a point of attachment, my elbow. So proximal, again, a lot of association. Think about the uh, when we're talking about proximal, think about proximity or close. Whereas with distal, that's the opposite. I think about distance. So further away, distal is further away. So using my forearm as a reference point, this is my proximal forearm because it's close to that point of attachment. And this is my distal forearm because it's further away. And then what's middle? Medial. Or medial. The medial, yeah. So this here is my medial forearm. So my proximal forearm, medial forearm, distal forearm. See how that works? Same thing with, with the arm. Proximal humerus, medial humerus, distal humerus. Okay, so what's proximal? It's closer to you. Close. Yeah, closer to you. What's distal? Further away. Further away. What's medial? Uh, middle. Middle. So proximal, medial, and distal. We got medial and lateral. Now, palm of your hand, right? The palm of your hand is referred to, or when we're talking about it, it's called the palmar surface. The palm, palmar, P A L M A R. The palmar. Now, in Spanish, what do you call the soles of your feet? Planta. Your planta, right? The cool thing about medicine is a lot of it is based on Latin. So us, us Spanish speakers, guess what? We got a leg up. Sorry, Brandon. Uh, uh, do you know Spanish, Brandon? No, I don't. Okay. Well, we're we're teaching you a little bit today. So las plantas, right? So planta. Think about the soles of the feet. So the term is planter, p l a n t a r, planter. 
So that's the plantar surface of your feet. So, for example, plantar fasciitis. Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. So it's the muscle, the layer over the muscles on the soles of your feet are inflamed, causing you pain when you walk. So you see how knowing the terminology, you can kind of put things together. Yeah. And the fascia is is a, a, a membrane that's over the muscle, and itis means inflammation of. So it's inflammation of the of the membrane over the muscle in the soles of the feet. So I love terminology. Uh, now the next part, I know they show some rated X or really high R pictures. Uh, so next up is the regions of the body. Just like the United States has regions, you know, the Pacific Northwest, New England, uh, Mid-Atlantic, the Appalachian region, the Southwest, Southeast, uh, the Rocky Mountain region, all that stuff. So there's the body. But they're kind of easy. We have the head, we have the thorax or the torso or or the trunk, uh, we have the extremities. There's four extremities, the upper and the lower. Um, uh, we have the umbilical region, the uh, inguinal region, the genital region, the, the popliteal region, which is behind the kneecap. Uh, we have the cranial, occipital, back of the head, cranial, the head, the cranium. Um, so there's different regions, and that helps us identify what part of the body. So the pain, patient complains of umbilical umbilical pain or periumbilical. Uh, so that means right around the belly button, and that could be a sign of uh, appendicitis. Uh, the patient um, suffered trauma to the thoracic region. They suffered an injury to the chest. Uh, they suffered an injury to the abdominal region, down at the abdomen. And we can get more specific uh, depending on the, on the injury. So there are regions of the body just to help uh, locate them. All right. Uh, we talked about the midclavicular line. We talked about the midaxillary line. Um, some of these others are, are a little bit, I think, a little bit much for us right now. but. Um, the big one is a cyphoid process, a part of your sternum. That's just a little protrusion at the end of your sternum, of your breastbone. And, and the reason we have to watch out for the, the xiphoid process is that when you are doing CPR, you don't want to be over that xiphoid process because you can break it off and, and then puncture the heart with it. So we want to be careful with that. Um, the breastbone, what we know is the breastbone is actually called the sternum. And there's different parts of the sternum. You see in the picture up there, it talks about the sternal notch. You can feel that sternal notch on you. It's it's as you go up, you feel that little divot kind of rounded thing right up in here. That's your sternal notch. And then you have the manibrium of the sternum, the top part. And then you get to the angle of Lewis. And that's a little bump. As you go down, you feel a little bump. That's where the, the manibrium and the sternal body. Uh, join up and so it's up and then at the manibrium the sternum goes down and that's why you feel that bump as you go down so you have the body and then the xiphoid process um you have your clavicle which is your collarbone the shoulder there's different parts of the shoulder the shoulder blade is actually called the scapula uh, your rib margin the ribs are called um, actually, let, let me back up a sec. A little bit more Spanish for Mr. Brandon. Uh, what do we call the ribs in Spanish? Yep. Costillas, right? So, in medical terminology, like I said, Latin, I love Latin. I mean, this part of Latin. Um, when we're talking about Ribs, we're talking about costo, C-O-S-T-O. 
And so as you see on there, the costal margin, the rib margin. So as you feel your chest and you feel the, the ribs under there and you feel how it goes around, that's your costal margin. Okay. Although a chunky boy like me, I, I have more muscle than costal margin. Uh, so you see the scapula in the back, you see the rib or the lungs on there. As the as the ribs go down, or I'm sorry, the scapula goes down. Um, and later on, when we do lung sounds, you'll you'll see it more. But as the as the scapula, it actually does that. So when you're listening to lung sounds, it's a little much, but um, we want to go around the scapula because it's going to be difficult to really get good breath sounds over the bone. There's a mid axillary line, then you have an anterior and posterior uh, axillary line. That's okay. Um, all right. Any questions so far? I know I'm kind of going a little fast, but I'll slow down. None? Okay. As far as topography, what's this? This is the head, right? Mm -hmm. This upper part back here like this, what do we call that? Cranium. The cranium. What's this part right here? The Frontal? Front. Nope. Face? What's that, Jessica? Mm -hmm. What was that? The frontal? I said frontal. Nope, not frontal. Yeah, it's the face. So the cranium and the face. All right. And then this right here? Throat? Uh-huh. It's what we usually want a massage of at the end of the long, stressful day. Neck. Yeah, the neck. So. All right. So I talked about the clavicle. The chest goes down to the diaphragm, okay, followed by the abdomen. And then the back is the back. Now, what is this right here? What do you know it as? Arm. The arm, right? I'm making sure everybody sees it. It's the whole thing. We know it as the arm, but in medical terminology, that's not the arm. So I need to change that thinking. We have two of them, and they're called upper extremities. Uh, damn network. So upper extremities. Um, now, as we further divide the upper extremity, this right here is your arm. From your shoulder to your elbow, that's the arm. So we have the shoulder, the arm, the elbow, and then this, again, we call this, we sometimes call this the arm, but it's not. This is the forearm. You have your wrist, your hands, your fingers. Okay. So your upper extremity consists of the shoulder, the arm, the elbow, the forearm, the wrist, the hands, the fingers. Okay. Now, so we talked about abdomen, back, general region, uh, the pelvis, which includes the hips, don't lie, or the hips. Um, now, once we get out down the hips, what is that big long thing we used to walk and whatever? Drive. Legs. The legs, right? Well, no longer 
are we going to call them legs? We're going to call them now. If these were, what were these called again? Upper extremities. The upper extremity. So now down below, what do you think we call those? Lower extremities. Lower. The lower extremities. Okay. So we talked about the hip. So the lower extremities consist of the hip and then your thigh. So, part of your homework tonight is ask your significant other, honey. I need to, I need to practice. I need to identify the the medial thigh. <laughs> you'll know, but you'll be like, huh? Or they'll be like, huh? Unless they work in the field, then they'll be like, uh, it's Wednesday, not tonight. Got to wait for date night. <laughs> so what is the medial thigh? The middle. Like the inside of the thigh. Yeah, the inner thigh. The inner thigh. All right. So we have the thigh. We have the knee. Also the patellar region. The patella is the bone that sticks out. So when we talk about the patellar region, we're talking about around the around mm -hmm. the knee. Um, and then we have the leg. And some people will call it the lower leg. That's okay. Leg, lower leg, same thing. And then your ankle, your foot, and your toes. Okay. Oh, my God. I know, huh? Tell me about it. <laughs> I have three classes today. I've had... Three classes the last two weeks, but I lucked out. Last week, the afternoon class had a test, so that was fun. I was able to enjoy quite a few hours of peace and quiet. The week before, the morning class did CPR, or, or you guys, right? You did CPR? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was able to en enjoy my day. But today, no such luck. I got lectured in all three classes. Uh, different subjects yeah exactly you guys are in a and p the afternoon class is in neurological emergencies and ultra mental status and seizures and then the night class is in actually the night class tonight's the last night of lecture so they're doing mci triage and weapons of mass destruction so yeah three totally different topics We're going to cover weapons of mass destruction. You guys are going to cover weapons of mass destruction. What I usually do, yeah, and some of us have had like a lot of classes on it. So I, I don't teach the very last chapter. I usually let one of the top students teach it. And it's even better when they're former military, so. Because they, they know a little bit more about WMDs. Because they, too, have been through a lot of training. so. Yeah, the very last chapter, I usually let a student do it. One, they, they feel what I've gone through the last three, four months, four and a half months. Um, but it's it helps break the monotony, and it's a little, you know, something fun to end the lectures with. So, yeah, two students are going to do the lecture tonight. So, yes, WMDs. Joy, joy, joy. All right. Cavities, um, I they don't check too much on cavities. This is more of a, a, a general knowledge thing, <coughs> but just so you're familiar with it. Now, you see on there the thoracic cavity. When we see IC or AL, it means pertaining to. So if you see thoracic, it means pertaining to the thorax, the thorax being the chest. So the thoracic cavity basically stores the, the chest organs, the heart, the lungs. Whereas the abdominal cavity stores 
the abdominal organs. What about the cranial cavity? Brain. The brain. The spinal cavity? Mm. The spinal cord? What about the, the pelvic cavity? The intestines? No, that's in the abdominal cavity. Mm. Pelvis? Okay, it pertains to the pelvis, but usually like the bladder and the, the reproductive organs. And in this one with the abdomen and the pelvic, they it combines, they call it the abdom, abdomen, no, ugh, I can't talk this morning. The abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay. Now, here's where I wish my my uh, iPad was working and I think I know what's wrong with it because that's not uh, on that I don't have presenter permission I can't go on there and present anything I would have to switch over from my laptop to um, to my <laughs> iPad but what I like to do on this one is I'll, I like to show you guys but let me see Yeah, you know what? Let's do a couple things. I know it's early, but I have to do something real quick. Um, so let's take about let's take a ten minute break, okay? <clears throat> so I can maybe switch over to my iPad, see if it'll work, um, and then I got to take care of something real quick, and then we'll get back, okay? Okay. All right. I'll see you in a little bit. Hey. I'm going to leave, so don't don't be worried. It's not like, oh, yay, the instructor's gone. We're going home. All right, I'll be back. 